But recognize what I've been starting to say is that it's the spirit of God's divine nature lives on the inside of us. And that's a really profound thought. So let's just pray for a second here and ask the Lord to, to make that real to us. Father, as we open up your word this morning, help us recognize that it's not a ghost, that your presence in us is not a ghost. It's not spooky or mystical uh, other than to know that it's your power and presence living on the inside of us. And Holy Spirit, help us recognize that you are the very nature of God living on the inside of us. And, and we repent when we have forgotten or through our pride or our arrogance just refuse to invite you in to the decisions that we were making. And we say, come Lord in your power. Come Lord in your presence in my life, in this region, in America, in the world because we need you. We can't get it done in our own strength. So even now, Lord, as we break the bread of life and we open up your word, feed us that food that will give us the nourishment that we need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go quickly through some of these slides. That was the, the graphic that we used this week to talk about what we were talking about today. And Psalm 139, 14, many of you know, is when it says, I praise the Lord because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's a really profound truth that surfaced over all the years that we started doing Elijah House 20 plus years ago, which we now call Possessing Your Vessel. If you want to look at that information, it's on our website. It's uh, actually really on our YouTube channel. There's a playlist of 19 different uh, teachings about that. And over and over again, that theme that we are fearfully and wonderfully made kept surfacing in the different teachings that we talked about and why we can't judge people because they're made in God's image too. And it's really hard in America, or I'm sure in other places, to not judge people when we look at them because we do it almost involuntarily. We, we form assumptions in our brain. We fill in blanks because we think we know, and, and we so discredit God. We say things like, oh, they'll never change. If you believe in God, you can never say that because God could change anybody, all right? Looking at one right here. Don't ever say they'll never change, okay? Because that's not true. When God is in it, there is no limit. <laughs> but one of the challenges, I'll just see if we're tracking here. Yeah, it looks like you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. Is from Proverbs, and this is part of the burden on us as the body of Christ is what is our role. It says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. That's a great way to say it, isn't it? That's a passion translation from Proverbs 25, 2. I'm going to read it again. God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory. So when you get into his glory, you're spending time with him, and you're seeking his presence, and he sees your heart has been humbled, and you recognize, I don't want to leave this altar until I hear from you today. Because I've learned what happens when I go out under my own strength. Again, I don't end up in jail per se, but I sure don't end up in the glory realm that you want me to be in. Because it's in the glory realm that you reveal the revelation, not just of what your word means, but how I should apply it in this situation. And that this situation is a thousand times a day, isn't it? In our complicated lives that we live. Growing up on the farm, Easter didn't have as much interaction with all the things that we have to do now. Life's a lot more complicated. God doesn't care. He's bigger than that. Amen. He'll be in every single decision you ask him to be. Amen. But he doesn't force himself in. All right, so that's his part. That's the truth that he reveals it in the hiding place of his glory. But the honor of kings, and look at somebody and say, you're a king. All right? And you're a priest. That's what the Bible says about us. Chosen generation, royal priesthood. I won't call you the peculiar people. Only peculiar in that we operate on a different kingdom. We're in the world, but we're of the kingdom of God while we're in the world, right? The honor of kings, that's us, is revealed by how thoroughly, I'm sorry, how they thoroughly search out the deeper meaning of all that God says. And that's a real good mission statement for Christians, isn't it? that we should be thoroughly searching out the deeper meanings of everything that God says, not just to understand the theory, but to know how to translate that into everyday life. 
in every interaction that we have. And you can be respectful to everybody, even when you don't agree with them. But it's not easy, is it? Not easy. Neither is forgiving people, but God helps us do it, doesn't he? It's supernatural that you're able to forgive people. Watch the uh, less than an hour video by Joyce Meyer called One Life, and you'll learn about the supernatural power of forgiveness. And I quoted one, Psalm 139, 14 already. I am fearfully, wonderfully made, but what I'm doing with you today is trying to say that part of the assignment is to take what's written in Proverbs 25. God reveals that revelation only comes when we're in that hiding place of his glory. And it's our job to translate that into the way we interact with everybody that we meet. And never give up hope on anybody. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that you have to keep inviting them over to dinner either. Right? You're not looking past everything they're doing. Sometimes tough love requires you to say, this is the requirement in order for us to continue. That is loving them. Candy-coating things and saying, oh, no, you didn't hurt my feelings. It's okay. Yes, they did hurt your feelings. Say it. You got the spirit of truth living inside of you, but just say it with love. And you might have to ask. I don't know how to do that, God, but works real good in a marriage. Amen. Ask first. <laughs> and then this is uh, Hebrews 1, 3 in two different translations because there's key words here. And it talks about the spirit of God having so many different dimensions. And that's how you should think of it. If you've ever seen a diamond up close and you change it in the light, there's so many dimensions of the way the light refracts off of that diamond, right? And that's how each person is. But the woundings that we experience in life are just brutal. And, and they, they cover over a lot of that glow of the diamond. But God still sees it in there behind all the pain and behind all the structure that gets put up to protect us. God still sees the light on the inside. And he says the sun, Jesus, is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mirror image. When you look at me, Jesus said, you've seen the Father. 